посол Глеб Ивашенцов, здрасте. Спасибо за вас времени в Москве. Ви с вами можем говорить. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, in my broken Russian, I started. But something that has not been broken over hundreds of years is India and Russia's ties and civilizations that have been all through history. How do you see it having evolved in the current geopolitical scenario? What are the commonalities between uh, Russia and India to deal with present day geopolitics? सबसे पहले मैं आपको धन्यवाद देता हूँ कि आप इस इंटरव्यू के लिए आए हैं मुझे आपसे मिलने से बड़ी खुशी है और मैं ज़रूर ये सब आपके सवाल पर जवाब देंगे आई थिंक दैट रशिया इंडिया रिलेशनशिप इज very important for today as it used to be uh, important for last uh, say 70 years but of course the situation has changed and uh, uh, the way we interacted say in uh, 1950s 60s or 70s it is different now the world is different uh, uh, russia's situation has changed india's situation has changed the whole global well, situation has changed but there are certain principle the features uh, of Russia and India, which determine uh, their very specific uh, role in the current world situation and in the future. For example, uh, despite of all the uh, it differences, Russia and India has three common features, which are very important for modern politics. First of all, Russia and India are multi-million, multi-ethnic and multi-confessional states. And they better and earlier than others learned the danger of uh, separatism, uh, religious radicalism um, and terrorism, uh, which now determine the situation in many areas of the world. And uh, we have had experience how to deal with that and we can offer our advice to others. Then the second important feature is that Russia and India are countries of old civilization. And uh, we are democratic countries. Therefore, uh, we would like uh, to have democratic uh, dealings in the international affairs. We have democratic setup for our internal affairs, but we want to have this democratic uh, way of doing things internationally. We do not want any domination or any diktat from anyone. Uh, we want to have this polycentric world uh, in which every country, big or small, uh, can express its will and defend its interests. And third, which is also a very important feature, is that uh, a quite important part of uh, population, both in Russia and India, uh, is of Islamic origin. Mm -hmm. And these are not migrants. Mm -hmm. These are not the people who uh, came uh, from outside, like all those migrants in uh, Europe, Europe at present. These are the people which used to be in our countries for centuries or for thousands of years. And uh, majority uh, of uh, Russians and majority of Indians, they used to live with their Muslim neighbors uh, quite peacefully uh, for quite a long period. We have experience for that. And therefore, uh, we better than others uh, understand uh, the issues of the Islamic world because we have uh, Islamic uh, countries as our neighbors. Sure. We used to deal with Islamic neighbors and we better than others can understand the issues, uh, the challenges which are facing the Islamic world like say Middle East crisis or Afghanistan crisis or Syria and others. When you talk about say separatism and both Russia and India have dealing with this problem so they should 
understand they understand it our leaders understand how to deal with them is that one of the reasons why russia and before that the soviet union has always been supporting india in the international stage on jammu and kashmir i remember in the soviet times there may be over 100 vetoes that were used in the united, united nations security council when it was brought up by other powers even now Russia stands with India on the Kashmir issue. Yes, of course, uh, and uh, it is a very long story because actually uh, it started with uh, Khrushchev and Bulganin's visit to India in 1955, uh, when uh, Jawaharlal Nehru brought them both to uh, Srinagar, and uh, there for the first time, uh, uh, Soviet uh, leaders uh, they expressed. Mm, our uh, position is that we think that uh, we in the Soviet Union thought that uh, Kashmir is a part of India. And uh, uh, it is very um, interesting that um, uh, for uh, so many years we always understood uh, the political moves of each other. And even uh, if uh, certain uh, moves uh, might not have been of very much approval, you see, because uh, they were different cases, uh, we never brought it uh, to the forefront. We discussed the issues because uh, we always uh, could come to a certain mutual understanding uh, to come to international fora together with a joint position on any critical issue. If you talk about another one of the major issues in geopolitics currently, it's, it's Iran. And uh, that's again a, a civilization which has close contacts to both the Russian civilization and the Indian civilization for centuries. Uh, how do India and Russia cooperate on Iran and vis-a-vis -vis what the U.S. is doing to uh, them. In I terms think of uh, Iran is a very important. I agree with you. Iran is a very important issue uh, for both of us. Uh, unfortunately, certain uh, foreign uh, countries uh, like to give us advice how to deal with Iran. And I recall an episode when I was uh, director of the department uh, in the foreign ministry. And uh, my department covered relations with Iran as well. And there was one American visitor wanted to meet high ranking me. High-ranking visitor. Yes, quite <laughs> high-ranking visitor. Uh, I don't uh, tell <laughs> his name, but he wanted to meet me and discuss these uh, Iranian issues. And that time, uh, that all uh, halabaloo about Iranian uh, nuclear um, program uh, started. Mm. And he tried actually to lecture me what we should do. I looked at him and asked him, when did the United States get it in Sabinus? He looked at me as I were an idiot <laughs> and said, you see, 1776. And then I asked, do you know when did the first uh, Persian ambassador come to Moscow? Huh. He said, no, no, <laughs> no case. I told him it was in 1521. More than 200 250 years. years before your country got its independence. Therefore, we know better how to deal with our neighbor Iran than anyone else. And uh, I understand Indian relationship uh, with Iran also. And uh, Iran is a very, uh, very important country internationally now. Unfortunately, Mm, uh, Western media tried to demonize it. I've been uh, to Iran quite often, and I think that uh, it is a very modern country, you see? Mm -hmm. It's a very modern country. You look at uh, Tehran and compare uh, Tehran and uh, with uh, some other uh, capitals of Asia, and 70% of uh, motorists uh, in Tehran are women. <laughs> you see, and uh, Iranian uh, uh, diplomats and other government officials I met, uh, they were very well educated, they could speak English, German, French, uh, they followed uh, all the internet developments. They are modern people and they want to modernize uh, their country, but 
Unfortunately, there are certain forces which want to limit Iran. But uh, Iran is a country of uh, Asian civilization. And what is also very characteristic, they do not um, say uh, stress about, say, Islamic issues. Mm -hmm. If you come there for the first time, they will always bring you to Shiraz to show Persepolis. <laughs> Because they are proud of the ancient history which was before Islamization of uh, Iran. And I think uh, that uh, with its economic output, and I think uh, it can become uh, really a superpower of uh, the Middle East there. Because uh, their um, uh, GDP is, uh, I think, bigger than uh, Egypt and even Turkey. Mm. But would you say in your assessment, say, countries like India have buckled into US pressure on sanctions uh, because we've also almost reduced our uh, oil imports from Iran to zero. Uh, Chabahar is almost non-existent in terms of investment happening from private sector in India, or Afghanistan or Iran. Do you think uh, India should have stood up for, uh, against the U.S. sanctions for Iran, or is that in India's self-interest? I think it won't be good for me to give advice to <laughs> India how to deal with Iran. I think uh, that Iran will find its uh, due place in the setup of the region. Because you see, uh, if we take, um, say, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, for example, Iran is observer there. And surely it uh, will become a member when uh, uh, its uh, nuclear dossier uh, is over, you see, when the sanctions of Iran uh, is over. And uh, Russia is cooperating with Iran, and just recently we had the session of the leaders of uh, Eurasian Economic Union, and President Rouhani was there. And uh, uh, in the whole setup of the region, you see, uh, Iran is a member uh, is a member of this um, northeast uh, transport corridor, Not which so. will uh, is which will become a major uh, transport artery uh, for Russia, for India, and for the whole area. Therefore, I think um, the time uh, will come when. Uh, Iran will have its due place in the region. In due time. Uh, China is, is moving into Iran and helping Iran in a lot of, of way in terms of investment and getting returns in terms of oil, at least plans are there. In terms of India, Russia and China, individually, together and bilaterally, all those three countries, uh, is there any way of making RIC or RIC uh, something that uh, could help the multipolarity of the world and especially the Eurasian and the Indo-Pacific region? Or is India and China too much of a, a potential clashing point? Uh, you see, if um, uh, you take uh, RIC uh, or the RIC, I think it's a very um, important uh, setup. Uh, of course, uh, three countries uh, do not have identical position on all the issues. And it is quite uh, reasonable because each of us uh, has its own uh, neighbors and its own uh, interests here and there. But if we look at uh, the root of the case, uh, we can see that there are no uh, major uh, say, a reason for any clashes between us. There may be certain issues in which we may disagree, but all these issues can be settled peacefully and to mutual uh, satisfaction. And you see, if you mention that uh, some people say that there may be certain clashes between uh, India and China, I think uh, there are much more issues and uh, things and ideas which bring India and China together, together. then separate them, you see? So, then, you, so you don't agree with um, some people or some analysts who feel that because of the current situation, 
the US versus Russia on many issues, US versus China on many issues in trade, Indo-Pacific, etc. Russia and China coming closer. Is that an alliance? Does India have to worry again about that? You see, uh, we do not have any not political alliance. or military alliance yeah. with China. Uh, we have uh, certain common interests uh, and uh, it is quite uh, natural. Uh, but I think that uh, you have also uh, a lot of uh, common interest with China because you and, Ch and the Chinese, we do not recognize diktat by others. You do not want domination by anyone upon you. You want to have this, uh, say, uh, mutually, um, uh, mutually um, admittable uh, relations uh, in the area. And if we look at the global picture also, you see, mm -hmm. uh, Russia, India and China have common interest to uh, get uh, more influence in a global economy and global economic organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, our economies are growing. Uh, we should have better uh, recognition by others. And uh, the thing is that at present, uh, this rig setup is more or less uh, say dissolved in the BRICS. Yeah, it's subsumed by BRICS. Uh, has uh, this uh, s scheduled uh, meters, uh, meetings uh, of leaders uh, have certain uh, um, secretariat uh, uh, setups and so on. The RIC doesn't have it. I think we should have it also because our leaders, they meet from time to time Mm -hmm. on the sidelines of global fora like, say, uh, this uh, G20 uh, or others, um, or um, uh, even this uh, UNDA, BRICS. But, uh, but we do not have special uh, Russia, India, China summits. But sooner or later will come, because you see, uh, there are certain interesting uh, changes. You see, when, uh, say, uh, two years back, uh, I wrote in one of my articles uh, about, uh, about the need uh, to have more active contacts between uh, Indian and Chinese militaries. Some exchanges of delegations and so on. Some people told me you are, uh, uh, say, some... It is not even uh, science fiction, it's just fiction. <laughs> uh, but we had uh, this uh, center yeah. uh, military exercises a fortnight back yeah. when uh, not just uh, Indian uh, militaries, uh, but uh, Pakistani uh, military and Chinese military all took the last place. Last year in SEO also, yes, there was a similar. Yes. Yes. So uh, it is good because when people uh, meet each other, when they uh, you see, these human contexts are very uh, important and uh, cultural contexts are very important. And I think as for Russia-India uh, context, I think Indian culture, uh, mass culture, uh, played a special role uh, in uh, strengthening these good feelings uh, in both countries. Uh, I recall um, a book by Ambassador Triloki Natkol, who uh, used to be uh, India's ambassador to the Soviet Union twice. And he recalled how in 1962, Jawaharlal Nehru tried to convince him to become ambassador uh, to the Soviet Union. Uh, Kohl had some and other suggestions, uh, but um, uh, finally he agreed. Uh, but that time Jawaharlal Nehru asked him, what uh, does he think uh, 
uh, we, uh, who are the best known Indians in the Soviet Union. <laughs> What then you Raj Kapoor? Uh, he <laughs> said uh, that it must be uh, Cole said that it must be Mahatma Gandhi, Ramindranath Tagore, and Jawaharlal Nehru. And Nehru said, "No, no, you are wrong. Uh, it is Raj Kapoor, <laughs> Nargis, and Jawaharlal Nehru, and in that very order." Uh, therefore, I think that Indian cinema also played a big uh, role in uh, bringing our two. Uh, countries together. Uh, certainly, India films, uh, India films industry has changed <laughs> at present, and like not industry. many films are coming to this wide mm. screen in Russia. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that um, we have this um, uh, satellite television and TV Plus, mm -hmm. where they have three channels in which they show Indian films daily. Wow. Yeah. So that the interest is still the interest very much alive. is still there, yes. <laughs> very much. Well, Ambassador, what would you uh, say to those who are looking at India gravitating more now towards the US uh, in terms of uh, whether it's military supplies from Russia, any other uh, industry, trade, eco economics, though of course the Prime Minister now has uh, reached out to the Far East in Russia. But uh, how do you, how does Russia see India's uh, bonhomie with the US, but still having contacts with Russia? You see, uh, I recall uh, one uh, uh, Indian academician uh, when he was asked, uh, you used to be a non-aligned country, what are you now? And he said, we are multi-aligned. Uh, <laughs> multi <laughs> you see, um, this uh, development of uh, India's relationship with the United States is quite uh, understandable. Uh, you want to have better uh, economic interaction. Mm, uh, we also want to have better economic interaction with the United States. Uh, as for, uh, say, um, uh, political uh, siding, uh, I think that India will never accept mm. any foreign domination yes. upon itself. It will be Wait. always uh, independent yep. and follow its own line. Therefore, why should we worry about that? We have our relationship with India, we, ha we are happy with that. And you mentioned um, uh, that um, uh, recent Prime Minister Modi's visit to Far East, I think, is extension of his uh, line that uh, act East. Uh, exactly. Actually, file Russian Far East, it is East. Uh, just a small uh, uh, clarification, not a clarification, but to understand what's happening in the Russian Far East. Is Russia worried? about uh, China, uh, the amount of investment, not only investment, but migration of people that's coming in from China uh, into the Far East, and hence they want India to also counterbalance that? Is that No, you correct? see, uh, a kind of uh, competition is always uh, good. <laughs> uh, if uh, you have your partners uh, competing with each other, <laughs> you can uh, get better results. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, I want to um, uh, uh, mention one thing, you see. Um, uh, we uh, are not afraid of uh, China's, uh, uh, say, um, invasion. Uh, and even this uh, immigration. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do not have any legal immigrants from China, uh, neither in Far East or anywhere else. And uh, the formal statistics show that there are many, uh, that there are more Russian uh, passport holders residing in China than okay. Chinese passport holders residing in Russia. Fair enough. You see, uh, Chinese come here for business, they come here for work, but they always uh, prefer uh, to come back uh, to China. And um, there is also one very uh, important thing. You see, all these um, rumors about this uh, Chinese invading Russia and all that, I think it, it marriages is... Marriages taking uh, place. No, mixed marriages, you see. Uh, 
you tell me uh, name is a country where know, you I have know, no I mixed know. marriages, you see. <laughs> mixed marriages are um, uh, everywhere. Uh, and um, here, you see, the rumors are spread by those who want to break up that relations between Russia uh, and China because uh, uh, <laughs> there are certain forces which want to weaken China and who want to weaken Russia. And they understand that uh, Russia, China's, uh, China inter interaction uh, are strengthening both countries. Therefore, they want to weaken it. Uh, but um, uh, actually, um, one thing is very important because when they say that China want to dominate the world, China wants to become uh, the supreme leader and all that. You just ask yourself, can you learn characters? <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, that uh, now spread of American culture in the world um, is reasoned by the fact that English is a very simple language. It is very easy to pick it up, see? But who can pick up Chinese characters? <clears throat> and historically, if you look at China, you see, it were the Chinese who built the Great Wall to protect themselves from foreign invaders. It was not Central Asians who built that wall. And you see, if uh, this, at archaeological excavations in China, one can find a lot of Central Asian uh, uh, say um, artifacts. There are no Chinese artifacts found in the archaeological excavation in Central Asia. Therefore, uh, I do not think we should worry very much about this uh, Chinese domination. We should uh, deal with them uh, properly and uh, discuss uh, the things on which we may disagree. Uh, but not, uh, again, not to put these uh, disagreements uh, to the forefront. You see, like, <laughs> I remember there was one famous uh, Russian uh, poet. You might have heard his name, Vysotsky. Da -da. Well, of course. Uh, he was once uh, interviewed. He went uh, to Europe. And it, he was interviewed uh, by... Uh, some French uh, journalist, uh, what he thought about the then Soviet system and all that. Mm -hmm. And he told them that uh, I have my uh, disagreements with my government, but I am not going to discuss them with you. <laughs> <laughs> so the same is to be there. If we may have certain disagreements with China, if you have certain disagreements with China, let us not bring them uh, to attention of those people who have no relation to our uh, problems. Pastor, очень приятно был с вами вас говорить. Большое спасибо, and hope to see you in Delhi very soon. Thank you very much for interview. Thank you. Thanks.